Book Three, Chapter Fourteen, of the Lancashire Witches. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Andy Minter. The Lancashire Witches, a Romance of Pendle Forest, by William Harrison Ainsworth. Book Three, Houghton Tower, Chapter Fourteen, One Grave. Notwithstanding the sad occurrences above detailed, James remained for two more days the guest of Sir Richard Houghton, enjoying his princely hospitality, hunting in the park, carousing in the great hall, and witnessing all kinds of sports. Nothing, indeed, was left to remind him of the sad events that had occurred. The prisoners were taken that night to Lancaster Castle, and Master Potts accompanied the escort, to be ready for the assizes. The three judges proceeded thither at the end of the week, the attendance of Roger Nowell, Nicholas, and Sir Ralph Asherton was also required as witnesses at the trial of the witches. Sir Richard Asherton and Dorothy had returned, as already stated, to Middleton, and though the intelligence of the death of Richard and Alison was communicated to them with infinite caution, the shock to both was very great, especially to Dorothy, who was long, very long, in recovering from it. Nicholas's vivacity of temperament made him feel the loss of his cousin at first very keenly, but it soon wore off. He vowed amendment and reformation on the model of John Bruin, whose life offered so striking a contrast to his own that it has very properly been placed in opposition by a reverend moralist. But I regret to say that he did not carry out his praiseworthy intentions. He was apt to make a joke of John Bruin, instead of imitating his example. He professed to devote himself to his excellent wife, but his old habits would break out, and I am sorry to say he was often to be found in the alehouse, and was just as fond of horse-racing, cock-fighting, hunting, fishing, and all other sports as ever. Occasionally he occupied a leisure or a rainy day with a journal, parts of which have been preserved. Authors Note published by the Chetham Society, and admirably edited, with notes, exhibiting an extraordinary amount of research and information, by the Rev. R. Raines, M.A., F.S.A., of Mildrew Parsonage, near Rochdale. End of note. But he set down in it few of the terrible events here related, probably because they were of too painful a nature to be recorded. He died in 1625, at the early age of thirty-five. But to go back, a few days after the tragical events at Houghton Tower, the whole village of Whaley was astir, but it was no festive occasion, no merry-making that called forth the inhabitants, for grief sat on every countenance. The day, too, was gloomy. The feathered summits of Whaley Nab were wreathed in mist, and a fine rain descended in the valley. The calder looked dull and discoloured as it flowed past the walls of the ancient abbey. The church bell tolled mournfully, and a large concourse was gathered in the churchyard. Not far from one of the three crosses of Paulinus, which stood nearest the church porch, a grave had been digged, and almost every one looked into it. The grave, it was said, was intended to hold two coffins. Soon after this, a train of mourners issued from the ancient abbey gateway, and sure enough there were two coffins on the shoulders of the bearers. They were met at the gate by Dr. Ormerod, who was so deeply affected as scarcely to be able to perform the needful offices for the dead. The principal mourners were Sir Richard Asherton of Middleton, Sir Ralph Asherton, and Nicholas. Amid the tears and sobs of all the bystanders, the bodies of Richard and Alison were committed to the earth, laid together in one grave. Thus was their latest wish fulfilled. Flowers grew upon the turf that covered them, and there was the earliest primrose seen, and the latest violet. Many a fond youth and trusting maiden have visited their lowly tomb, and many a tear, fresh from the heart, has dropped upon the sod, covering the ill-fated lovers. End of chapter 14